All right, welcome everybody. Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to our Region 9 Healthcare Coalition General Membership Meeting. Uh, I'm pretty excited about today and I'm really excited to hear some of the discussion and presentations that have been arranged for all of us to hear and to learn about that are things that are going on or have happened in our region or experiences that people in our region have, have lived through and are here to share with us today. So I think we've got a pretty exciting agenda. Um, and uh, for those that don't know me, my name is Ed Desi. Uh, I am the uh, administrator for the Lincoln County Health Department, but I serve as the chair of the Region 9 Healthcare Coalition. Uh, and it's great because I think it's a great opportunity for me to learn uh, and get to know all of you um, and how we can work together to enhance our healthcare system. So it's a great position for me to be in and it's very enjoyable to learn and to see the work that you guys do. Um, today we're going to spend some time uh, learning about what the current status is of our Region 9 Healthcare Coalition strategic direction, uh, things that we're putting together and putting in place on behalf of the Region 9 Healthcare Coalition uh, as we transition from where we've been to where we need to go. Uh, Travis is going to update us on some of the work that he's doing and the Healthcare Coalition Executive Council is working on on our behalf. Uh, we're going to spend a little time at that point, we're going to have a panel presentation uh, to give us some lessons learned and uh, some background on the active shooter incidences that have taken place in Spokane. Uh, so I think that that will be a great panel presentation that will give you a lot of uh, ideas and planning concepts as you look at preparing your facilities for some similar type of accident or uh, incident. Uh, so some great people there, some great resources with a lot of experience, and we're going to hear from that. Uh, we're going to break and transition at that point and spend a little bit of time uh, talking about the current situation of our, our Ebola response and planning and preparation for the healthcare system in Washington State. A lot of great work going on, a lot of planning going on on all of our behalves and in our facilities. Obviously, we don't have near enough time to cover that, so we'll touch on some key points that you need to be aware of and need to know. And then we're going to break uh, for Dr. Carrie Jones to present to us on her experience uh, working in uh, Liberia uh, in, in the actual Ebola response in West Africa. So I think it's a great, a great presentation and a lot of things for us to learn about what's really going on on the ground uh, over in West Africa. Uh, and then we will uh, wrap up our meeting uh, and move on to the rest of our day. So any thoughts, questions? Uh, those of you in, I guess I can't see it at this point. So if you have any questions on GoTo, make sure you type those into the chat box uh, because that is our way to communicate with you. So if you have questions uh, or comments, type them in the chat box and we will periodically check those uh, and make sure that we respond to your questions uh, and your concerns. Um, and those in the room here, uh, please remember, and the speakers that we have today, we don't have amplification in the room. The microphone that I'm holding does not amplify here, but it does transmit over the go-to connection. So it is important to keep reminding ourselves that we need to speak loudly so that the folks in the room can hear. Uh, so with that, I will turn it over to Travis, and he can run through the strategic planning activities. Thank you, Ed. We did. Great question. So this is my first speaking part for the Spokane Re or for Region 9 Healthcare Coalition. I've been part of the organization now for 30 days, and I have uh, had amazing opportunities to watch and learn from some great mentors in the organization that have provided great leadership for a long time. But this is my first time speaking, and I'm pretty excited about it because I've been to a number of events where we've had a great group of people with a lot of interesting subjects. But uh, So bear with me. It's the first presentation I've done for the coalition and also the first time I've done slides in a while. So I got pretty excited about some of the graphics options and PowerPoints. So um, please bear with me. So I started about 30 days ago, like I said, and I took this position, and I called my parents, and I told them what I was doing. And they said, well, what, what is the healthcare coalition? And I'm like, well, it's this amazing network that tries to create a systemic response to crisis events within our healthcare industry using all the available resources to use them in the most efficient manner to get the right care at the right place at the right time. And they said, what does that mean? I said, all right, 
take out a napkin and draw three simple circles. In one spot, put healthcare. In another spot, put um, emergency response. And forgive me, law enforcement and fire and everybody in, the, in EMS and 911 for kind of lumping into that big circle. But for simplicity's sake, and then put public health in there. And then somewhere right in the middle, that's where health, the healthcare coalition has a really sweet spot. And it really helped them understand kind of what this was. And it's been a really fun learning process in the past couple weeks. Engaging with the healthcare coalition, learning about the work that's been done for the past oh, eight years at least, four years in a, in a formal way with Erica's work as a strategic planner, uh, and really trying to identify how much we do. It's a tremendous amount of work. As an organization, we started looking at our existence and realized that some of the funding that we receive is starting to change. But we do a lot of things that are really critically important for our, for our, our community. We obviously support WATRAC. You know, relationships are our currency in this industry, creating connections between hospitals, emergency departments, um, law enforcement, fire, making sure that all the gaps are covered within our community. We have a lot of really important components to what we do as a coalition, and we have to find a way to sustain that. Left mouse button? I don't know. We'll get through the slides. So, but as part of our sustainability plan, I, and forgive me again, PowerPoint was really fun because, so two things, I, my, I'm a son of a geologist and then I'm a rock climber as well, so good granite always gets me excited. And so this is a, a granite rock um, in Lake Omak, Washington on the Colville Reservation. And it's a really good symbol to me of kind of where diversification is important when it comes to support and sustainability. We all know what's going to happen to a rock like this over time. It's got a single point of support. And we realize with the coalition we're in much a similar situation, that although we're good rock, we're doing a really great job in our community, we won't be able to sustain ourselves in the future if we don't build a base that allows us to have multiple funding sources. So right now, uh, we're currently funded entirely by um, ASPR dollars, and those have been changing over time. So the organization started um, a strategic planning process that really kicked off in a significant way earlier this year with our um, National Healthcare Coalition Resource Center review and audit and created a number of goals and suggestions. From there, the coalition went ahead and started prioritizing some of these goals as well as recommendations. And we've built Gantt charts and we started talking about type timelines and we started developing a process for us to start identifying the components that'll add up to a sustainable organization. We've got a number of things in play right now, and this is just a few of the priorities that were identified in that strategic process, and all of them are kind of in process. And that's a, it's a difficult place to be because we identified as part of our strategic, um, our executive committee, that we have a number of things we need to do right now. And it's kind of a really big discussion about what it means to be a coalition, how we serve our membership, and how we're going to continue to do that going forward. And obviously, building a business plan for financial stability, making sure that we're meeting the needs of our audience by making sure we're connecting and communicating to them in the right way with our communication strategy, making sure that our mission statement is true to where we want to go as, where we, as well as where we have been. These are all processes that are in place, that are in play right now as our executive committee, um, our staff, and our leadership review documents that have been in process for several months now and continue to be so. Our goal is to come forward in 2015 with a very clear plan about where we want to go. And so the next two to three months really are a, a chance to look backwards, look at where we're at, and really plan for the future. So specifically, I had a couple slides that I pulled out that were details and mission statements and, and the text of where things are going. But again, I think the important point for me to cap on this process is that it's, it's a chance for us to reach out to you and listen to what our membership needs from the coalition and how we can fill your roles. Because as we plan for the future, it's important that we understand the value that we play in your organization's role in the community and your perception of how we do fill gaps and how we do closed loops to make sure that we are a resilient and robust uh, agents, or community in all of eastern Washington when it comes to disaster planning. 
So any questions on some of the things we have in process or questions about specific timelines?